Yeah, so yeah, let's talk about the monsters in here, because there, there, there's... I, I know that uh, innate spellcasting has changed a bit. We, over the last... goodness, it's been like eight plus years, if we go back to the D&D next days, have been in ongoing conversation with our fellow D&D fans in the community, getting feedback endlessly uh, through Unearthed Arcana, uh, as well as reading people's questions online. And that conversation is often influencing us to look at ways to make the game even more fun, even easier to learn, and to sort of shorten the pathway to getting to your bliss, uh, whether you're a DM or a player. And so as we reevaluated each of the monster stat blocks in this book, including uh, the, uh, the new stat blocks that also appear in this book, we were looking for ways to make the monsters easier to run for the DM. Uh, so we would look for things that might be confusing and then make them less confusing, look at places where we could combine abilities. Uh, and so there's a fair amount of that that's going on in the stat blocks. Uh, there are the adjustments we've made to some of the spellcasting monsters, which we talked about a bit back at D&D Celebration. Uh, I'll say a few things now about that. One is rumors of the death of spellcasting uh, are not true. Yeah. <laughs> spell, spell, I saw plenty of spellcasting. You know, there. there is a ton of spellcasting uh, in, in this book. Uh, no, what's happened is we have combined what used to be called innate spellcasting and spellcasting into a single trait of just spellcasting. Mm -hmm. Largely motivated by that streamlining effort that I mentioned, because we noticed, not just because of feedback we received, but because we are constantly DMing and playing D&D, that sometimes as a DM, it can be a bit much when you get into this monster that has a big list of innate spellcasting options and spellcasting options, and when it's you know, round by round deciding what the monster is going to do, bouncing around in the stat block to see all of the options. So we endeavored to consolidate the options whenever possible just to make it easier for us as dungeon masters to pick what is the monster going to do next. So there was that, there's a bit of a, a combining going on. Uh, and then we looked for also opportunities to remove options that a DM is, was unlikely ever to use and then in some cases, we also introduced new magical abilities uh, in the monster stat blocks, which people have already seen a bit of in books like The Wild Beyond the Witchlight, as well as in Fisben's Treasury of Dragons. Now, some people have pondered, are these magical abilities replacing spellcasting? No, they're not. Spellcasting uh, continues to be in monster stat blocks, and the monsters will often have these magical abilities that are not spells alongside mm -hmm. a, a list of spells that they can cast. Those magical abilities have been in the game, those magical abilities that are not spells, going all the way back to the 2014 Monster Manual, where you can see them in monsters like the Mind Flayer, that, like it's Mind Blast, right. which is this magical ability that is not a spell, and it's not, as designers, it's not intended to be a spell. Uh, just like there are player character abilities that are magical that are not spells. Uh, so some things that happen in the D&D multiverse are spells, which are these organized formula that get combined to create a very specific magical effect. But then there are other things that go on in the D&D multiverse that is a kind of more squirrely form of magic, a less formalized uh, kind uh, that is not as easy to sort of interact with with things like counterspell or dispel magic and that's intentional. It's intentional that again there are certain things in the multiverse that follow this sort of formalized pattern which is a spell and is therefore can be empowered the way spells can be empowered but also countered the way spells can be countered and then there are these other mysterious things that give even Archmage's pause, like, how exactly is this functioning, and why can't I stop it? Uh, you know, we, there are these fun twists uh, that can occur in the narrative, uh, as well as in the game design, and you're going to see a bit of that uh, in Monsters of the Multiverse.
If you liked this interview and you'd like to see more, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little bell symbol so you're notified anytime a video like this comes out. Thank you so much for watching.